You know the feeling at the end of a relationship when whatever you do, no matter how well-intended, humorous or polite you are, the other person literally looks for offence. Well, this is where we are, sadly, with Boris. He got Brexit done, which was a huge mission. Then the pandemic struck. He put together a first-class vaccine rollout, and in between all of that, he got married, caught COVID, nearly died, and had a few more kids. There's been a few so-called scandals. We've had wallpaper gate, animal gate, never-ending party gate. It's been, what, two years? He must be exhausted. And behind these scandals, Carrie Johnson's name keeps popping up. There seems to be a contingent who want to level blame in her direction. But I dare any man to reprimand his wife for attempting to ambush him with cake. You're a braver man than many. So now he's on the ropes like Rocky Balboa, and everyone's chucking their hat in the ring. The blows are coming from all directions. So if not Boris, who? Well, top contender for the leading role is Rishi Sunak, who's apparently married to a billionaire and accepted that some people will slip through the gaps during the pandemic. Yes, uh, some uh, three million people, <laughs> actually. Uh, most of them self-employed, the very lifeblood of the economy. They got little or no support and their lives, especially in relation to their credit ratings, have been destroyed. The other day he put together, in my eyes, a naive policy to assist people with the cost of living. The only thing was... It doesn't appear to assist people with the cost of living. No surprises there. I mean, remember the universal credit uplift. Then there's Foreign Secretary Liz Truss, in Liz We Trust, who doesn't appear to be any good at geography. She boasted that the UK would supply our Baltic allies across the Black Sea. Unfortunately for her, Ukraine is not considered part of the Baltics, as the Baltic Sea is not on its border. She's also apparently secured numerous Brexit deals, with men, which many argue leave us worse off. But at least she's doing stuff. Sadly, I can't tell you much more about her than that. There's Michael Gove, who's currently dealing with the cladding crisis, which clearly should not fall to the leaseholders to pay. Uh, but you or I could have told the government that in any case. He came out of the woodwork to betray Boris in the earlier days, but he seems to have mellowed a bit. And there's Tom Tugendhat, who actually has a hat to throw in the ring. Although, until he did that memorable speech in the Commons, nobody had really ever heard of him. He also got involved with the conversation with Penn Farthing in Animal Gate, where Tom didn't appear to get his facts straight when he inferred that the animals were being prioritised over humans. Despite calling the Prime Minister to apologise for his mistakes, Tom, to my knowledge, still hasn't. No, no takers for any of those. You see, the problem is, none of them appear to possess the charisma that is required for leadership. And this is important. This intangible quality becomes infinitely more obvious when charisma bypass Keir Starmer is mentioned. There's no point disposing of a leader on mostly grounds of his moral conduct when little is known about the others. And to have a leadership challenge now feels uncomfortably like ego. What is clear is that the person at the top is not always the one in control and that an intricate network of civil servants have been running the show for years. Whilst I agree Prime Ministers should lead by example, we've been through unprecedented times, and I believe Boris was the right person to take us through them. Has he had a fair crack at the whip? And how many Prime Ministers can claim to have done so much in such a short space of time? So I ask again, if not Boris, who?